One Punch Man is back in the limelight. Hooray! All rejoice at the godsend that is Caped Baldy. But with a new studio at the helm and issues already severing the fan base because of the animation quality, will One Punch Man retain the momentum of the first season, or will, like Attack on Titan before it, fall from grace due to seasonal drag? The short answer, in my opinion, is a little bit of both. But hey, this video needs to be at least 10 minutes long for YouTube to find my existence significant, so I'm going to string you along for more, my fellow audience, as we begin in the form of a question. So, for all of you out there, you're probably asking in your heads, why are we comparing these two shows in the first place? Well, both One Punch Man and Attack on Titan were anime that blew up in the community on sensational levels, becoming so popular that people who normally don't watch anime adored these shows. Though like any anime, their momentum died down once their first seasons ended, leaving hungry fans wanting more. In which more meant a lot of waiting and speculation, all leading up to sequels that, in various levels, left those communities at least somewhat disappointed. Where that disappointment happens and why is where the situations regarding these shows diverge. However, that doesn't mean One Punch Man can't learn from the mistakes of Attack on Titan, nor be immune to repeat a similar conclusion. That by the time Attack on Titan Season 3 rolled around, the fanfare was so minor that you wouldn't know this was once the most hyped up anime of the 2010s. Well, unless you're a manga reader, but we don't talk about that rabbit hole of crazy. But to answer the question in 20 words or less, both shows were massive hits and seeing how each are simultaneously impacted by production woes is a fun observational soup. For now, let's categorize the issues both shows faced in order to break it down further. Part 1. All Vampixels! Keeping with current events, I feel we should get the animation discussion out of the way first. One Punch Man Season 2 is not the Sakuga darling of its predecessor. I know, shocker, right? Having a completely different studio, complete with their own design philosophies, taking the helm of a beloved franchise is of course going to look different no matter what your level of tolerance is. So, with that in mind, for the minority of graphic snobs in the audience, let's just get the elephant in the room out of the way already and say that One Punch Man was never going to rekindle the same animated fire it did the first time around. Cue dramatic gasping noise. Go! Now concerning the number of you who were put off by the visuals, I'm going to say this now. You aren't wrong either. In fact, if the horrible noise of the vocal minority expressed their concerns more calmly in the first place, then we could have come to a common ground much sooner. Yes, One Punch Man Season 2, done by everyone's favorite slice of life machine, JC Staff, is a noticeable downgrade, but not a deal breaker. For what it's worth, I think the studio did an okay job, given how high the expectations were. As stated earlier, I don't think they could please anyone at this point, no matter how much they tried. Were corners cut in the animation? Oh yeah! The second episode alone was very stilted, keeping mouth movements to an absolute minimum, while the major action piece between Sonic and Genos went by too fast to make out what was going on. But again, as a reminder, these pretty pixel problems are both important, but still kind of passable to watch if you don't care that much. In comparison, while more consistent in its animation, Attack on Titan throughout its three seasons did have its share of noticeable kinks. One example I can remember regarding the broadcast version of the first episode, in where quick hiccups of animation occurred during the whole Titan attack fight with all that purple screen stuff, or whatever you call it. I know it's nitpicky of me to point out, I just wanted to draw the similarity that production issues are common, but not a deal breaker for trying trying their hardest to meet the expectation of man. So in this aspect of the video, Attack on Titan has a significant advantage here, but that still begs the question I need to ask for One Punch Man. Why didn't Madhouse, or at least its noticeable freelancers, return to the series? It's no secret that this was One Punch Man's win condition into becoming a global juggernaut. Ooh. One speculation could reside in Madhouse's infamous no sequel policy, but we all know that's total bullshit if given the right amount of moolah. I mean, just look at Anime Skeletor and the Strange Brigade. But I think I have a better idea that carries over into our next part. Part 2. 
Delays for days. It doesn't matter the industry or the profession. Time is money. And money leads one to temporary happiness that requires more time than money, and the vicious cycle continues. Oh, capitalism ho! In all seriousness though, you can have bad animation and still make a successful product, but if your series takes too long from announcement to announcement to come out, then real fanfare is lost. And fanfare means money. Between these two shows, I can confidently say Attack on Titan was the most self-destructive in this department. YouTube video after YouTube video documenting just how much the hiatus put a stop to any anticipation it garnered up to the current seasons. Much can be blamed on the missed opportunities to strike while the iron is hot, on top of the problem with catching up with the manga too fast. Right now, the franchise is a bit better as it tries to remedy time by doing the anime in parts. It's still rocky, yes, but it's a start. As for One Punch Man, the formula of delays did put the franchise in a similar starting point as Attack on Titan. But I feel that its unique gathering of industry people put it up to a caliber that allowed for the anime to take its time for quality assurance rather than pushing it out ASAP. I easily remember how much tolerance people had for One Punch Man being delayed if it meant the possibility of the Sakuga staying intact. But regarding how things actually turned out, can we really blame people for being mad? The delays for One Punch Man were advertised for the sake of making the quality better. So when that doesn't deliver, people have full right to grab their pitchforks and protest in the streets for wondering where all the time really went. I really hope it wasn't to giving Hulu licensing rights because that clearly was not important. I digress. One realistic factor that we gotta remember is that One Punch Man Season 1 was nothing short of a passion project. People were connected under one cause, as one, eh, pulled a real life power of friendship to get all who respected his work on board for the first time around. So it's safe to assume that this lightning in a bottle just wasn't gonna strike twice. People probably had other projects to work on, other commitments to fill. So the question on why freelancers couldn't come back as they once did seems very profitable, but we have to to face the hard truth. One Punch Man, on a production-wise standard, is back to being a normal anime with normal anime expectations. Like a Super Saiyan that just finished his final attack, so too did the special sauce of First Season's Gathering commence. All trap cards were activated and every friendship punch exhausted, taking us back to reality. Because when you really think about it, if One Punch Man's first season was produced in a realm of what normally happens in the industry, no one would bat an eye. But it wasn't. Instead, it got an extraordinary win to push it along, and it's not like the second season doesn't have the same... FIRE? It's just more focused on pace with the source material. Okay, so it may sound like my defense of them isn't too confident, but look at these scenes and you can say something got animated. <laughs> Got. But seriously, talking about what many have already pointed out, it has been following the source material at a nice pace. So if you're someone who only watches the anime, you won't get lost. See? Now we can all clap. Hooray for JC staff. Golf clap, golf clap. Reaching outwardly now, could both One Punch Man and Attack on Titan be saved some grief if they just waited longer to announce their projects? I don't know! You'd think it'd be just that simple. Keeping expectation low would garner an easier fanfare to manage, but in Attack on Titan's case, that ship already was sailing with how long it's been since the first season. So in that regard, there's not much it could have done. One Punch Man could have waited a bit longer, but seeing how things turned out, who's to say it would have actually made a difference in the end? We as a community would probably still give it the flack regardless if it was put out months or a year from now. And heck, they did have to keep up some hope for a sequel, otherwise One Punch Man would have fallen into the trapping of Attack on Titan Season 3 with barely any fanfare at all. No degree of caliber will keep fans waiting forever. They also could have incentivized some of the freelancers who worked on One Punch Man Season 1 to come back, but the logistics could get complicated if they waited too late to announce job invitations yada 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 who truly knows so let's just stop here at the production's hoops and gather a consensus of what we learned today part three well the part where we learned something i guess
The point I'm trying to make today is that despite a roadblock of production issues, a series is never truly ruled by its limitations. One Punch Man and Attack on Titans production did have similar issues, but the details really show how Pacific Circumstances flips the script on what part of those production flaws are the focus. For One Punch Man, can season 2 be enjoyed with its limitations? Yes, it certainly can. Personally, I think so far that it's fine. The vocal minority of any given series will make the conversation overbearing. But it's important to remember that conversation is two-way, for the majority of their concerns are valid. Very, very valid. So just be respectful is all I'm trying to say on that part. As for Attack on Titan, the limitations it had were time-focused, losing momentum as it was reaching Season 2, and although Attack on Titan did eventually recover somewhat from its time constraints, I do think there's more to the reasons why Season 2 dropped off so many people that it did. But that's a topic for another video. Maybe if I remember, but until then, like all the stuff, comment all the stuff, and subscribe to the Anime Misfit today if you're new, where time is actually cheese and cheese is potency. Look, they can't all be zingers. I got a cold, okay? Just give me a break! Follow me on all my social media, and if you feel so inclined, consider supporting me on Ko-fi and or Patreon. Remember, commissions are now open, so if you want to see something that's not here, consider checking that out. But anyway, I'm gonna go drink some orange juice before my voice goes out or I start talking about monkeys with trombones again. Shannon, out!